So one of the most important things is to cover my jars to make sure that the light does not directly hit them. So what we did for this area was I used a piece of cloth that I had and we just folded it in half and we didn't actually even drill in holes or anything to secure it. We just let the items actually weigh it down. And so when I want to get something out of it, I just go ahead and flip it up. So I have a bit of a bit of herbs underneath this section, um, probably two to three dozen, and I'm able to house all different types of jars. And so I have some that are double stacked. I especially like the four ounce jars from Ball because they can fit on top of other jars that I have. So I have some jars like this that I showed in another haul and they can be useful for canning too. So when I finish it up, I probably will save it for canning. And what I do is I write on the jars with a Sharpie. And I got this tip from TT's Urban Pantry. Check her out. I love the clear jars because I can see everything that's in it. It's easier for me to identify something by how it looks. And I haven't really made a system. I have to go through and organize it a little better. But I do try to put likes together. So mints together. Um, I have hyssop and anise hyssop. So I'll put those two together. This is Lobelia and Flata. And as you see with my jars, I do try to choose the smallest jar possible. This is hibiscus. And so I just don't want the air because the air, the heat, uh, the sunlight, moisture, those things can degrade your quality faster. So I have these jars and lids here. These are from Seafage. And I like that they have the herb pattern. They just really look nice. And I'll be doing a review soon when I can with them. It's an off brand, but they are thicker. And so I look forward to trying and seeing how it works because you could definitely save some coins. So I am just going through my herb, showing little bits at a time, showing what they look like before we go on to our next section. But as you can see, I would like to have a little bit more spaces in between them. That's a lethro. And so that I can just manage it a little bit better and not have to hold herbs in my hand as I'm going through. Now I just placed an order and I probably would do a video on that. And so I'll have to see how I can fit that into my area because now it's going to be filled up again. So let's go to our next section. This is in our laundry pantry area. This is actually a tiered shelf that my husband built. It's very colorful. I didn't realize I was picking up. I have our little reef on the door. All right, so I'm showing you here how we made this makeshift curtain. And I just did it with twine and some fabric that I bought. And it um we just put some nails on the ends and we just wrap the twine around it so you can fit it to the exact size that you need and so this keeps my jars in this area covered so here's some of the jars that i have here you'll see that i have a lot of recycled jars and so that's one of the ways that you can save money just by taking your old pasta jars even lemonade anything that comes in these glass jars so salsa jars This one says for totally, so that must have been some sauce. Some of them don't always come off perfect, but it really doesn't matter if I'm just using it to house herbs. I'd rather have it not look perfect than to go out and buy some. 
so here I have some of my spice jars and I try to put certain things in the same types of jars so I know instantly what I'm going for so I have all of my culinary spices and you see this is just one jar that I got it came with a chalkboard label already on it and I don't really prefer those because the writing can come off so I do have some of those and I do have some of the labels and I'll use it for more of maybe my cleaning products that I could figure out what it is but I wouldn't actually recommend those I'd recommend just writing on the jars and I just find it just really easy and I just take a day and take things out of packages and put it into the jars and just write on everyone and I also have some of these larger jars and I love the ones that are more airtight and they have a little clasp at the top and you can see here that I have some of mason jar covers and I just put that and that's just an extra layer of protection I think it makes it even look nicer and you can kind of coordinate it with those as well here's another I always try to get some kind of jars that have some kind of seal in it if possible so I have all different sizes and so it's just like whimsical and fun when you're doing that. Another one jar that I have. And I also have some plastic mason jar lids as well but I prefer as you see I prefer to use those elsewhere I like to use them when I'm making my tinctures so you don't have to worry about see hurt us that's salsa so you have to worry about a corroding metal the alcohol corroding metal or even vinegar uh, here's another one and I didn't actually label this but I know what it is it's just a mix of white oil bark and calendula and I talked about that in my skincare video that I'll also link for you guys. So you can see here, it is the same white willow bark. So what are some of the herbs that you all have in your apothecary? How big is your apothecary are usually just starting? And some of the herbs that I think everybody should have, I would say just off the bat, if you have a woman in your household, it raspberry leaf. For everyone, nettle, I think is really wonderful. Dandelion leaf, if you don't get the root, but um, both parts of the dandelion. I also think it's really important to have some yarrow on hand and also to have some plantain. So if I just had to say just even five, I would maybe throw burdock 